and awareness, an excerpt from flowering of consciousness. Both love and awareness have a cause and effect relation. The ultimate flowering of love is awareness and when one attains to total awareness, love is spring forth as compassion. The ultimate in awareness or in meditation is compassion and the ultimate in love is dhyan, awareness, meditativeness. A life becomes really alive only when love blossoms. Otherwise it is a tree with no flowers, no foliage. In the absence of love or a bird without wings that cannot soar high in the sky. A life without love is crippled in worldly and paralyzed. From the outside everything will be as it should be but from the inside something is missing, something which makes everything valuable, something without which it is all dark and dismal. Love is the lamp of your innerness, the light of the within. But love springs forth. Whenever it springs forth, it brings problems. Sometimes the problem is so big that it seems safer to avoid it. It brings anxiety, conflict, pain and bondage. It is absolutely necessary. The person who avoids love is indeed committing suicide. Those who live calculatedly, whose life style is rooted in arithmetic, whose vision is material, the worldly, the outside, whose vision consists only of the miserable and the logical, they are bound to decide against love. They will call love madness and they are not absolutely wrong either. In the absence of understanding, in the absence of awareness of the ways of the love, they are right. Love has its own unique ways its unique understanding, its unique awareness. It requires a deep meditativeness to understand the essence of love. They are right because love brings so many problems that life becomes turmoil and insanity. This is your experience. But the experience of Buddhas about love is totally different and opposite. One loses all balance and that to get out of it is very difficult. In love, without awareness, without understanding, one loses all balance and then to get out of it is very difficult. Then one, one thing leads to another. One problem leads to many other problems and the process goes on. Hence the cautious person decides against love. But then he has decided against life as well. Love is life. When you decide against love, you have decided against life as well. It is like committing a suicide. Then you will find no meaning in life and he will live meaninglessly. Then he simply vegetates and calls it life. He drags and he feels 
continuously that there is no dance, no significance, but he consoles himself. It is so because life itself is meaningless. What can be done? What can I do when life is meaningless? Sartre and other existentialists say life itself is meaningless. So it is not our fault. Life is absurd. It is not our fault. But they are utterly wrong. Life is not absurd. Life is not meaningless. But the meaning in life comes through love. Meaning in life comes through awareness. Both love and awareness are two wings. You cannot cut off one wing and fly on the next wing. For flying two wings are necessary. For walking two feet are necessary otherwise you will be limping. If you overlook love or awareness you are simply crippled, you are limping, you are without one wing. Life is not absurd. Life is not meaningless. But meaning in life comes through love and awareness. By love, I do not mean what you mean by it. To you, love simply means a relation. Love is a way of understanding, is a way to relate, is a way, to, way of inner flowering. Each moment life unfolds many situations for love to grow. Life is only an opportunity to grow into love. I repeat this. Life is only an opportunity to grow into love. Each moment life unfolds many situations for love to grow. Love can grow only when there is awareness. Love brings problems with it too. Hence all the religions of the world have decided against love. These religions have been invented by the people who are calculating and businesslike. A poet has said, Har ay bechare ish pe hain, husn pe kuch ilzam nahi. All fingers are pointed towards ish, love. But nobody says anything about beauty. No one points out the fingers towards the beauty. It is the beauty that captivates, that sows the seed of love in you. The beauty of the plants, the rivers, the nature, any kind of beauty sows the seed of love in you. Har ab bechare ish par hai. All the fingers are pointed towards ish or love. Everybody complains about love but nobody says anything about beauty. Husn pe kuch ilzam nahi. People live with all kinds of calculations. The monastery is nothing but an escape from love. All those people who have failed in the love try to renounce to the monasteries and places like this. Love can become without any problem if one more element is added to it. And that is the element of awareness. The element of awareness, when it is added, love becomes meaningful, love becomes a song, a dance, a celebration. Unconscious love creates problem. In fact, it is not love that creates problem. That is a misunderstanding that everybody has that love creates problem. Indeed, it is unconsciousness in love that creates problem. 
It is possessiveness in love that creates problem. It is envy, it is jealousy in love that creates problem. Love brings envy, love brings jealousy, love brings possessiveness in the absence of awareness. When you are unconscious, love will bring many problems of envy, jealousy, hatred and possessiveness. These are the problems. It is unconsciousness that creates jealousy, possessiveness, domination, fear, anxiety about the future, suspicion, doubt and all kinds of such things. It is unconsciousness that brings anger, hatred and conflict. It is not love at all that brings problems. But we are such a mixture that unless you are very aware, you will not be able to separate them. The moment you become alert, they can be separated. The moment awareness breathes in you, they can be separated. And once you are able to separate love from unconsciousness and you are conscious of your unconsciousness, it starts disappearing. Because that is the only way to make it evaporate. That is the only way to dissolve the unconsciousness, to be Conscious of unconsciousness simply means that consciousness cannot allow unconsciousness to exist anymore. The light cannot allow darkness to remain anymore. Unless you have the corners where light cannot reach. Otherwise, once the inner light is lit, the whole Place gets incandescent, darkness disappears. It is like bringing light to a dark room. The moment light is inside the room, the darkness disappears. It dissolves, it melts, disappears into the vastness of the light. Yes, when you are bringing the lamp and the room is still far away, you can see that it is dark because you are seeing it from the far. The closer you come, the more you can see that it is dark. However, the moment you enter the room, the darkness disappears. I remember a Sufi parable. Once a mystic asked one of his disciples, Go out and see whether the sun has risen yet or not. Sufis are very apt and have a unique way of teaching through parables. It is very early and the last phase of the night is still on and the disciples said, there is no need to go. I can see from the window that it is dark and the sun has not risen yet. It was the last phase of the night. So disciple saw that and he said there is no need to go anywhere. I can see from the window that it is dark and sun has not risen as yet. But the master said, then you take a lamp with you and go and look for the sun. Whether it has risen yet or not. If it is dark and you cannot see, then take a lamp with you. The disciple got puzzled. The master looks crazy, but he is giving an indication to the disciple. Certainly he is not talking about the outside world. He is talking about the inner world. He is saying if it is dark, then take the lamp and look whether it is really dark or not. And that lamp is inner flowering. That lamp is of awareness. And the moment you take the lamp, darkness is no more. 
The same happens when you become aware. First thing is that unconsciousness disappears. Awareness and love are not separated. When all the misery that has remained associated with love is no more associated with love, it becomes purified, a fragrance, and the unconsciousness starts disappearing. Because you start becoming more and more conscious of it. This is the whole process. This whole process is the beginning of inner journey. Only two things have to be remembered, love and awareness. With love and awareness, inner search begins. And you remember that this awareness, this light, is the only medicine, is only panacea of all the problems of misery and things like these that you are facing. Awareness is the state of no mind. Method is awareness. Illnesses are myriad and their nature is varied. But there is only one health. The quality of health is one. When light comes in, health happens. Health happens only in one way and is always the same. Whether I am healthy or you are, the feel of health is same. Whether Buddha is enlightened or Raman is enlightened or Ramakrishna is enlightened, they are all healthy and health has one quality. Diseases are millions, wrongs are many, but the right key that unlocks all the doors, the master key is one. And rather than cutting the branches and pruning the leaves, cut the very roots. There are many people who go on pruning the leaves or cutting the branches. These are moralists. A moralist cannot be spiritual. Remember, therefore, awareness is the master key, the last, that unlocks the door of love and brings you into the oasis where there are always myriad flowers, blossoms. The season of spring never vanishes. Love has never experienced autumn. Even if it is there, it has its own beauty. Look in the nature. A spring has its beauty, autumn has its beauty. The spring of love, the autumn of love, both are beautiful. Love and awareness are two wings of an individual along the inward journey.